This is from that familiar passage from Matthew chapter 2. <coughs> I will just read verses 1 to 6. That portion where it is written about the wise men who came from the east. <coughs> Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. I am using the New King James Version. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are you not, are not the least among the rulers of Judah? For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd his people Israel. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. <clears throat> in the morning I, I spoke about... Um, the response to the message, the response to the message of Christmas through the wise men. When that star appeared, wise men responded. When Herod, the king, came to know, he responded. And the priests and the scribes who kind of went and searched and authenticated, yes, yes the king of Jews is born or will be born according to the prophets. They responded. That the message is in YouTube. If you understand Telugu, you are more than welcome to log in and listen to that message. While I use uh, definitely some English in the morning. So we will just look at the same passage. And today we will focus on that very star or that light of Christmas. And we will look at it in three parts. Uh, the message is the same, but the response was different. And the same thing continues to happen every century, year on year, among generations. People know the message of Jesus. They've heard about the gospel, the same message. But unfortunately, the response is not the same. And God wants us to respond today if you have not responded to this message of Christmas. Christ being born, not just in this world for the sins of mankind, but he was born exclusively for you and me. And if you have not opened your heart for him, it is my prayer that you say, Lord, please come in and let him take residence in your heart on that throne where our self is seated. In the morning, I sh shared this small joke. For those who came in the morning, it's a repeat. There's a lot of shopping and discounts that happen during Christmas time, not in India, but abroad. And people only wait for Christmas season because of the sales that are there. And here we will have to wait for Diwali and buy during Diwali time because during Christmas there is no sale. So now Diwali is over. If you've not brought, that is okay. So there is this wife who is gone and finally she liked a wonderful um, diamond necklace which was 2 lakh rupees. Uh, so she texts these days WhatsApp and texts her all common. So she texts her husband saying that, you know, I like this. She took a photograph of it and she said, it's 2 lakh rupees. What do you say? He sent back a text message saying that no price is too high. But the only problem is after no, he forgot to put the full stop or the period. So the way she read it is, no price is too high. She thought, what a wonderful husband I am. And you know what would have happened after that. So please be careful when you're texting in a hurry. And later on you may have to end up paying a bigger price. I hope you under some people still didn't understand. His message was, he said that no price too high. But there was no full stop after no. She read it. No price too high. That is the danger of English. <sighs> One dot here and there will make a lot. Okay, But the point is, 
what is your response somebody told this told that if if the if there is no bible um, basis to say that they were three wise men let me just clarify that one part uh, the only assumption is since there were three gifts given they think that there were three wise men nowhere it is written there is three wise men so it's okay they were wise men they came they gave those gifts that is good for me and let me not get into the doctrinal issue of whether they were three four half a dozen it doesn't really matter uh, somebody said that supposing if they were wise women instead of wise men it's all for this wonderful women out here uh, what would have happened and and they went on to explain saying that they would have asked for directions first and been there much before time helped in the delivery cleaned up the stable and brought practical gifts like diapers and things like that some of you smile let me stop jokes and let me come back to the word of god so um, we will look at this star in the morning i i gave three words and i'll just remind i'll i'll put it before you and then we'll quickly look at this light that light that sh- that was shining in the in the in the in the sky um david says in in psalms 8 was was a 3 and 4 if i'm not mistaken yes it is psalm 8 was 3 and 4 it's up there for us on the screen when i consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have ordained what is that what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him keep this at your back of your mind during this christmas season when i consider the heavens i mean david would have just gone out and seen we are not used to seeing the sky now we are so used to it we are seeing we are so used to now seeing the whatsapp messages than the sky but go see the creation he says the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have ordained what is man that you are mindful of instead of putting what is man remove that and put your name what is peter that you are mindful of him that the son of man that you visited me right it changed the whole perspective the god who created this heaven and the earth is mindful of you and me if there is somebody who thinks about you 24/7 it is not your wife it is not your children let us be honest including ourselves we don't think even those who are madly in love 24/7 they don't think there is a time when they sleep no at least while the person might come in the dreams here and there but god thinks about us 24/7 that is the god we have and he thought about you and me and he sent his son and that is what christmas is all about and in the morning i said the wise men responded to this message by being inspired they were inspired to follow and i told quite some things in the morning herod was intimidated he he was afraid when he heard there was somebody who was born king of the jews and the scribes and the priests were insignificant they searched they told where he was born or where he will be born according to the scripture but didn't do anything and that is the tragedy if you are insignificant to this very fact and i told you in the morning they knew the facts and didn't lead them to faith knowing facts the world acknowledges that jesus was born because it is a historical fact the world may not accept that he rose from the dead a lot of them don't <laughs> they say we know that he was born we also know that he died but he rising from the dead you know that story we we will not accept lot of people know it as a fact in their head and lot of christian theologians professors pastors bishops if i have to use know so much in their head but that has not led them to faith in their heart and that is the tragedy insignificant that star was there in that sky that day and it kept leading to do certain things and we will quickly break it down into three parts the light of christmas or the star of bethlehem or the star of christmas whatever title we may give the first one is the star was in that sky 
to authenticate the birth of Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is how it was told back in the Old Testament. There was this prophecy from Mika, and there was this prophecy from Isaiah. And those, promise, those prophecies came true when Jesus was born, and it was authenticated by that star. <coughs> and the second one is, <coughs> it was to announce, not only to authenticate, but to announce that the king of the Jews was born. And the third one, I'm not elaborating on that, was to attract these wise men. And today, all those to come to Jesus. The whole purpose of the star, if we see, we'll quickly see that as we meditate in that scripture portion. It kept moving, 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 moving. And finally, when the wise men come to that place where Jesus is, it stops there. It just stops. And that is the purpose of the star. To attract us and to come to Christ. Let us look at this light in three parts. The first one is the directing light of Christmas. The second one is the defining light of Christmas. The third one is the divine light of Christmas. Three things from this scripture portion. The directing light. How did it direct? And within that two parts, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. These wise men would have never found Jesus if they had not followed the star. Is it right or wrong? Right? They would have never seen. And Bible commentators say, based on the decision that King Herod takes out of anger, out of frustration, that he might lose the power, he sends out this order after he realizes that the wise men have deceived because he says, we'll get to that in a moment's time, that after you find him, please come so that I'll come and worship him. That was not the reason. And God cautioned them, we will look at it. But once he realized that he was deceived by the wise men, he did his math based on the prophecy and what the priests and the scribes told. So he, to be on the safe side, he said, go ahead and kill all male babies who are below two years. That was the dark side of that first Christmas. Let us not forget. The dark side of Christmas was the sinful heart and the sinful action of King Herod. That in so many houses they lost their male child, their male baby boy. Think about those families. They would have told for what reason our boy is killed. Some boy was born who is supposed to be the king of Jews. How does it matter to me? I have lost my child. I am not getting there. That is a tragedy for different purposes, not for us to meditate today. But then, when, so, so, when, so when they traveled from the time they saw the star, Bible commentators say, based on this order that King Herod gave, that probably by the time they reached because they found him in a house, not in that manger or stable, they say that probably Jesus was already two years old, close to two years old. That means to say that they had taken this long journey. That light, that directing light, compelled them or directed them to go the distance. And today, as we meditate, 2016 years later, about wise men and the star and the directing light of Christ, when Christ or God's word is directing us, are you willing or am I willing to go the distance for Christ? Am I willing to take the challenge? Because Christ always challenges us. Following Christ is a challenge. There is no two ways about it. Because you and I are called to live a life that is against the principles of this world. Either you choose to go according to this world or you choose to go according to the word of God. And I praise God, those wise men took that challenge and they were willing to go the distance. Are you willing to go that distance? Wherever it may be, 
however tough it may be they also went the distance they not only went the distance they faced many a difficulties in that journey nothing is recorded but we surely can assume a two year journey from the east to where jesus was born back in those days however wealthy they may be was difficult and the question for us today is when god is directing us according to this word because that is what the psalmist says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path right that is the word of god and when we are walking according to the light which is through this word and when you have that light before you that means it is very clear and just beyond that light will be dark but the beauty is as you keep walking in the light the light keeps extending and that is how it is when we obey the word of god there are so many things still are not clear to me but whatever is clear to me i don't have any doubts but to act according to his word and that is amazing will it lead to difficulty yes will it give to lead to danger probably yes will it lead to sometimes disappointment yes but still am i willing to walk that distance for christ and during this wonderful festive season maybe god is calling each one of us to go that extra mile to make that extra effort to reach out to somebody if not anything use your whatsapp use your facebook and things like that to spread this good news that belongs to everybody that christ is born this is the best time there is no other opportunity that you may get where people are comfortable to know about christ during this christmas season use those opportunities go that extra distance that means to say that spend that extra time spend that extra money and whatever it may take for you to go and share the gospel i i'm i've used every opportunity that is coming my way but i can't be in two places at the same day right so i only choose one 17th of december was the maximum invitations that i got but finally first come first serve basis i gave them one day and in fact next sunday evening i speak in kamam and next day evening i have to speak in thadipatri in kadapa so i drive down this side come back here and drive down the other side i will not drive but somebody else will drive and i can't sleep in the, in the car i can't sleep on flights also this is a different story but i just praise god that he is giving those opportunities and different audience different on the kamam is uh, is uh, medical college students and in 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 um, thadipatri it is ultra six ultra tech cement so it is employees out there oh, and, and and i love that god is taking me to different audience it always happens every year every year the audience are different and day before yesterday friday we did this uh under the banner of entheon among the corporate uh, people in high tech city amazing response a lot of people were prayerfully invited about 250 people came of which about close to 75 people are from other faiths each one of them after the meeting was over came and acknowledged that it was nice to hear it made sense we'll go back and think and things like that so continue to pray but it is each one of our responsibility to be first directed by his word not just doing for the sake of doing but if you are directed by the word however difficult it might seem whatever distance you may have to go please do it and that is what the wise men did the second one this light is not only directing light it is defining light and we will spend few minutes here looking at these three groups while we saw it in the morning in a different way we will see it again today evening the three groups the first group is the priests and the scribes the second is king herod and third is the wise men how did this light define them and let us remember when god's light which is god's word shines 
or is focused on us or when we see God's word, it gives us enough light to see our sin and turn to the Savior. Whenever you hear God's word, whenever you read God's word, it will show us exactly which area are we falling short and will nudge us to turn to the Savior. If you have not done that, I encourage you to do so. None of us are perfect. A lot of us here are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. God has cleansed our sin, there is no doubt. But as and when you sin, while there is no need for us to sin, but there is enough opportunity for you to fall down, that doesn't give you a license to sin. That's what Paul says in Romans 6. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? He says, no. But whenever that happens, as per 1 John 1, 9, it says, our God is faithful and just so when you confess your sin, He is going to cleanse. He is going to sin. So He gives us light to see our sin, clearly, whatever it may be. And then also shows us the need of our Savior. So, when this light was shining, it defined these people. And how did this light define these people? The religious leaders, if we go to verse 4 of Matthew chapter 2, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and that prophet is Micah in 5.4. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will be shepherd by the people Israel. So they carefully checked and they admitted, but yet they didn't come into a saving relationship with God. They stuck to their religion and they remained there. Bible commentators said, I wrote it down, that Christmas is a fulfillment of about 333 prophecies concerning his birth, life, death, resurrection. 333 prophecies were fulfilled when Jesus was born. Amazing. All of them, various prophecies. But the religious leaders were stuck to their religion. The spiritual leaders, religion is defined in that light. And a lot of people still are very religious and ritualistic when it comes to Christmas or Easter. People don't turn up on Good Friday also. Easter is good. Sometimes some people turn up on Good Friday with great, great difficulty. There was one young guy who came to a Christmas service and he was going back. The pastor was outside and he said, Nice to see you. You know, I want you to be in the army of God. And we meet every Sunday. And the young fellow of this generation, he said, I'm already in the army of God. He said, then I don't see you on Sundays. I only see you on Christmas and on Easter, no other day. He said, I'm in the secret service. <sighs> Lot of people are in secret service. They only turn up. There is no secret service, let me tell you. We are in the army of God. That means we are active every day. We need to wear the armor of God. You know, be open to testify. So uh, religion is deceptive. Rituals are deceptive. And there are a lot of people who are just doing that and think that they have a relationship with God. And the light of Christ defines whether you are religious or you are having a living relationship with God. The first Christmas was a tragedy because the spiritual leaders were stuck with their pride and with their religion but never took time to be directed to a relationship. As I told in the beginning and in the morning that they knew the facts so clearly but it didn't lead them to express their faith. And may that tragedy not occur in anybody here. Knowing the facts that he was born for you and me and you don't take that fact and express your faith 
then what is the use of Christ being born? Be directed. That light is defining. Now when it comes to Herod, we'll spend a few minutes there. How did Herod respond to the defining light of Christmas? It defined his rebellion. While it defined the religion of the scribes and the priests, it defined the rebellion of King Herod. When he heard, notice the way he responds to the light of Bethlehem. In verse 3 it says, When Herod the king heard it, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. So he was disturbed. And maybe this news is disturbing to a lot of people. At least it is disturbing to people from others, other faith for sure. And for those who are born in Christian families and who are not saved also, it is disturbing. They say that, why should they talk about Christ? You know, why should I accept him as my savior? We can simply celebrate it as a festival and things like that. It disturbed Herod because he felt that his position is in a problem. He was enjoying that power and the power associated with that position of leading that entire country. And I think I told in the morning, Herod being disturbed is understood because he had power. But the entire city of Jerusalem, Herod was not able to take up this challenge that Jesus has kept before, that boy Jesus of Bethlehem had kept before him. A challenge of letting go his his throne and his kingdom and saying, I accept. He didn't. But Jerusalem didn't want to change. They were used to Herod and they didn't want another king. And I told in the morning, a lot of people don't come to Christ because they are not willing to change. They are used to a pattern of lifestyle and they say, I don't want disturbance. I don't want this lifestyle to change. I was like that 20, 25 years ago. I liked the way I lived. Whether I liked it or not, I said, that's okay. It is my life. Let me, let me live on, on my terms. That is what this world says like. Get the best out of life. That is the saying of the world, right? Yes, no? Time is limited. Get the best out of life. And Jesus says the exactly opposite. He says, give your life to me. Hallelujah. And then you will get something eternal out of it. And a lot of people don't understand. So they are running and doing so many things, trying to get the best out of life. But Jesus says, you give your life to me, I will give my life to you. And then you see what you could get from this life of mine. This life of mine. I am glad that I did this exchange 21 years back, 22 years back. I am glad that I did this exchange and I said, Lord, I want your life. So he was disturbed and then he became defensive. And that is the problem when God's light or God's word as God's light shines on you and it's been shining every time you open it or you hear it on a Sunday morning like this or a Sunday evening or any other time, when his light shines through his word, either it defines your religion or ritual or it defines your rebellion. And don't be in that spot. And when it is being defined, when that rebellion comes out, people become defensive and Herod became defensive. And after which he kind of had deceit because of which he says, you know, in verse 7 and 8, then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star was, uh, the, the star appeared. And he set, sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go search and carefully, go search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. That is deception. His intention was to go and kill the child. But on the face of it, he said, I want to worship. That, that is a caution for people who profess that they are Christians but who don't possess Christ. There are a lot of people like that. 
you and i could be deceived by their prayers you and i can deceived by their words by their attire they may even carry ba- bibles and all of that wonderful christian names i am not picking on anybody but i had such encounter with those people but now over these years the grace of god there is some discernment i still lack pray for your pastor that he has the di- he should get the discerning spirit honestly because my nature is i take everybody on the face of, of what they say and sometimes it is out and out deception and i continue to pray and my wife the only prayer i think my wife prays is lord give my husband discernment he is in a position of leadership not here even at work i have been a lot better now but still that is my struggle a lot of people can be deceived and that is what satan is doing these days there are so many people who speak about christ but they are not for him against let us anti christ all these cults that are coming up different ways of presenting god's word taking the word out of context and deceiving people and people are just flocking these places in hundreds and in thousands being deceived being deceived it's such a tragedy it's such a tragedy and herod felt that he could deceive the wise men praise god god's word came to them we will look at it at a moment's time so the defining light of christmas showed the rebellion of herod and herod was disturbed herod became dis- dis- defensive he was deceitful and then he wanted to do the deadly thing of going about killing every male child who is below 2 years a rebellious heart will always be at war with god will always be at war with god but the same light defined the relationship of these wise men the same light defined the relationship of this wise men they followed in spite of difficulty they followed in spite of distance they followed in spite of danger they wanted to do two things one is to worship him the second is to give him the wealth that is why they brought the best that they had and they kept it from the beginning of the journey till the very end and they offered him now we we'll look at the third one and with that we close we saw the directing light of christmas we saw the defining light of christmas the star of christmas the star of bethlehem the star of christ we will see the divine light the divine light what did this divine light do three things which is important as we come to the end first one is this divine light helped the wise men discover christ i can spend quite some time here but i'll just leave the thought for you the light of god will help us discover him even more each day whenever you open god's word with an open heart and an open mind and say lord reveal yourself i am telling you he will clearly reveal there is no two ways it will help us discover know him even more that is the beauty of this scripture and if you continue to do that day on day you will rejoice because you will know him a lot better i i am a testimony to that for what i have known him 22 years back to now there's a lot not in the head but in the heart and i want to continue to know him even more and that is what the light of christmas your doubts will be gone your fears will be gone and god will continue to draw you closer to him the more you read god's word as simple as that the more you time that precious time each day you give it to him and you will experience yourself that you will get closer to him draw close to me and he says i will draw close to you and that is what the word of god does helps us discover are you really having that zeal and passion to know him even in lot more depth in lot more detail then come to the light the divine light
the divine light that that <clears throat> star kind of kept moving after they came out of the palace and it says that it stopped in 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 verse 9 of chapter 2 when they heard the when they heard the king they departed and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the sun where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceeding great joy the second thing the divine light of christmas does it not only helps you discover it helps you dedicate it helps you dedicate and that is what they did when they came in verse 11 and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented him gifts they presented gifts to him gold frankincense and myrrh that is dedication and when you have known the lord when you discover a lot more about god through his word through the experiences that he gives you and me we will should be even more dedicated if that is not happening that means you have not discovered him that means you still have doubts that means you still are kind of discouraged and you are disappointed and certain other things because of which you are not dedicated and i am telling you that is what god expects keep him first keep him first the standard question that people ask me wherever you go the moment they come to know that i am still working and have this ministry and all they say how are you able to manage standard question we don't even have time to sometimes come to church forget about doing something for him i say it is the grace of god and my priority is him first it is him first and nothing else and did, when, do i fulfill my other responsibilities i i i do that and god has been gracious to me and i can't thank him enough so be dedicated and devoted and that can only happen when we know him and when we know him through his word it is such a joy and the third one is the divine light back then gave them deliverance from the scheme of herod gave them deliverance when they had seen and heard and experience it determined their further action just a moment there and with that we close please remember this one thing of the many that we have meditated today every time i'm telling you whenever we meet god we will not be the same there will be some change there will be some change because there is still sin in this body you and i can never be the same each time we encounter god in our lives each time same thing happened their entire direction changed after they met that boy jesus in the house they came one way they went the other way whenever you come to christ whenever come come to the presence of god whenever you read god's word and whenever you discover whenever you dedicate you are bound to make a change in the way you lead your life some change i don't know where but always god cautions us it is my prayer that let god direct you let god define you and let god dedicate you and the beauty is always waits for our answer he is a god who is patient and today he is waiting for your answer what will you do when the light of god is shining on you through his word what will you do will you be like herod and rebel or will you be like those scribes who are ritualistic and religious or will you be like those wise men who want to enter into a relationship and would you want to continue to discover and dedicate and be delivered and directed by the light of god's word let us bow our heads in prayer for the word that god gave us as he always gives in this blessed season this is the second sunday in this month of december year of 2016 
Just reflect upon what God has given you and me tonight. That wonderful star was there to authenticate, announce and to attract. And today God's word is that light for you and me. When it is so freely available, will you be directed and discover him even more and dedicate yourself so that you experience deliverance and your doubts are removed. Say yes, Lord, and commit yourself. Gracious God, we thank you for the word that you've given us as you always give. May your light of your very word continue to shine even more so that we could see you clearly, O oh God, and keep dedicating ourselves as a living sacrifice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.